Um, so, uh, hello everyone. Thanks for joining the presentation of LT Inspector, which is a systematic approach for adversarial testing of 4G LTE. This work is a collaboration between Purdue University and University of Iowa. Me, Shagov Tamhenas, and our advisor, Professor Elisa Bartino, are from Purdue University, and our collaborator, uh, Professor Omar Choudhury, is from University of Iowa. So cellular network considered as one of the critical infrastructures for a nation. So it is being widely used for uh, personal communication as well as broadcasting public safety messages uh, in case of emergencies. For example, like in, in case of uh, tsunami or earthquake. So last month, uh, we may have come across the news of uh, ballistic missile alert in the state, state of Hawaii, where a such ballistic missile alert has been issued uh, through the cellular network infrastructure. So though the message was sent mistakenly, uh, it actually created a huge panic among the people. So in this paper, we show how the adversary can exploit the vulnerabilities of cellular networks and perform uh, different kind of uh, security and privacy related attacks, uh, including broadcasting fake emergency alert messages, which may, chaos, which may create artificial chaos among the people. So <laughs> there's already a substantial uh, amount of work that address the threats on uh, cellular network. Uh, one such threat is IMZ catching attacks, where the adversary forces the victim mobile device to expose its unique identity, which you call IMSI. Uh, once the IMSI is being exposed, the uh, adversary can track that mobile subscriber. Also, later on, the other researchers have shown that even if the IMC gets replaced by a temporary identity, the location can be still tracked by the adversary. Some other researchers have come up with some denial of service attacks. Most of this work have used some clever intuitions, either drawn from the specifications, specifications ambiguity or from the operational network's mistakes. But most of the work has at least one of these following limitations. They either do not have any systematic approach uh, for attack discovery. Sometimes uh, the analysis do not uh, have any kind of adversarial uh, concept. And some of the work uh, specifically are focused for previous generations of cellular networks. So in this work, we pose the following research question. Whether it is possible to build a systematic framework for adversarially analyzing the cellular network specification in order to find security and privacy related problems. So here are the scope. Uh, we only focus on the LG, uh, 4G LTE. Uh, there are many uh, procedures for the 4G LTE, but we specifically focus on the attach, detach, and the paging procedures. These are the most critical ones to ensure the uh, correct operation, uh, correct and reliable operations for the handover, VOLT, SMS, and so many other procedures. For instance, if there are vulnerabilities present in the attach procedures, the attacker may perform man in the middle attack and uh, listen every conversation. Also, it may inject malicious packets and thus cause spurious billing. Even uh, if we have the uh, vulnerabilities present in the uh, paging procedure, uh, the attacker may cause life-threatening risk that we have seen in the first slide. So here is the outline of my presentation. Now I'm going to talk about the challenges in achieving our goal. So the first challenge is uh, there are many procedures in 4G LTE which are stateful in nature, and there are multiple participants that may cause the scalability issue. Second challenge is that 4G LTE lacks formal specification which may cause the ambiguity. The third challenge, most of the operational networks that are deployed are closed systems, so any testing approach should be like black box type, like fuzzing. And operational networks, like any, any, any major carriers, they operate on the licensed spectrum. So we cannot send any messages to the core network to test their network. Next, I'm going to give a brief overview of 4G LTE ecosystem. So in 4G context, uh, a geographical area is partitioned into cells, where each cell is served by a B, uh, base station, we call it E node B in the LTE jargon. And this base station provides the cellular connectivity to the cellular devices, which we call user equipment, or EV. The EV connects to the internet through a core network, or EPC, which consists of many different nodes. Uh, 
Uh, among them, only uh, MME, Mobility Management Entity, and the home subscriber server are the most important ones for our discussion, which actually uh, takes the respons responsibility of managing attach, detach, and paging procedure. So let's give a brief overview of attach procedure, which consists of four steps. Initially, uh, the mobile device gets connected to the base station, and it sends uh, its identification, that is the IMZ number, uh, and then the uh, mobile device and the core network, uh, they go through the authentication step by having a challenge response protocol. Then they negotiate the security algorithm. That means they choose the encryption and integrity protection algorithm. Finally, the core network assigns a temporary identity for the mobile device. In case of any incoming service, for example, phone call or SMS, the core network, that is the MME, uh, notifies the EUE using the paging procedure. Uh, there is, this is the paging request message that is sent by core network to the E node B, which then broadcast uh, this paging message to every mobile device in your cell area. So then uh, the mobile device receives the service. For the detached request, uh, either UE or MME can initiate the detached procedure, and then UE gets disconnected from the network. So here the background for the LTE. Next, I'm going to talk about our framework, LTE Inspector, which is a model-based testing approach. So we consider a dollar VR attacker model, which is capable of eavesdropping the messages uh, on the public communication channel. Uh, the attacker can drop or modify the message. It can inject any fake message. And it adheres the cryptographic assumption. That means that if it knows the key, then it can decrypt any encrypted message. So the obvious question that why do, I, do we choose a dollar VR attacker model? It is, it is a powerful adversary attacker model which uh, realize majority of the adversarial capabilities in the context of LTE. Also, there are automatic uh, tools uh, like ProVerif and Tamarin. They can leverage this attacker model. So here is the insight. While analyzing the 3GPP specification, we identified the set of characteristics that are common among the properties that we, want, we plan to verify. The first characteristic is temporal ordering of events. For example, like if there is an event occurred, there must be an another event beforehand. Next uh, is the cryptographic constructs, which uh, relates to secrecy, authenticity. And the final one is linear integer arithmetic constraints, which are usually used for checking the sequence numbers. So here is the intuition. Model checker are good at uh, uh, reasoning for the temporal trace properties and linear integer arithmetic. Whereas cryptographic protocol, they support unbounded parallel session, and they are good at uh, a specific form of safety properties, for example, secrecy of the rational equivalence. So now the obvious question is, how can we get the best of both? So we combine the protocol verifier and the model checker to get the best of both. So here is the brief overview of our framework, LT Inspector. We model the LT protocol from the perspective of two participants, UE and Core Network. We combine the functionalities of the core MME, that is mobility management entity, home subscriber server, and the base station into the core network. Once we get uh, the benign protocol state machines, the adversary learns the, what are the messages are being sent and received by the benign participant. Then we feed that knowledge to the threat model instrumenter, which takes the benign protocol state machine and incorporates the threats into the benign state machine. We then feed that instrumented threat model to the model checker, and model checker takes a set of properties from the specification. We verify the, those properties. If there is a violation of the property, the model checker provides a counterexample, which means a set of sequence of actions for the adversary, which should follow uh, for performing an attack. But remember that uh, in, the model check, uh, in the initial threat model, we didn't have the cryptographic uh, proficiency for the threat model. So the attack steps uh, that we found may not be feasible when we have the cryptographic assumptions. So we model and check each of the attack steps with the cryptographic protocol very fair. If we, if we don't require any cryptographic protocol that we know that already from the domain knowledge, the message doesn't have any kind of integrity or secrecy, then we take the domain knowledge. Then after verification with the cryptographic protocol, protocol very fair, we take that attack into the real test bed to see whether the attack is really doable in practice. So here is how we build the abstract LTE model. Uh, we read the CGBP specification, read the manuals, and build the UE and MME state machine. And we only consider the NAS layer protocol interactions, that is the uh, UE and MME. Our model is at the propositional logic level. Uh, we model message types, 
not the message data for now. We abstract away cryptographic constructs by considering uh, a Boolean environment variable, and we consider two unidirectional channels because of easy of reasoning for the model checker. So here is how our threat uh, model instrumenter works. So whenever any benign participant wants to send a message, uh, the adversary flips a coin, and if it is the head, then it is the adversarial run, and it may choose non intrinsically the actions for, the, for, the, for that message. If it wants to drop the message, then it injects no operation. If it uh, wants to modify or inject, then it check, change the message type or the content of the, of the data. And if it is a benign turn, then uh, the adversary lets that message to pass through the communication channel. So with model checker, we verify two types of trace properties. One is liveness, that says that something good eventually happens, and another one is safety, nothing bad happens. So we used new SMV, but any general purpose model checker uh, can be used in, 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 in place of new SMV. So here is a sample property we want to check. If EUE is in the uh, state of EUE waits for authentication, then EUE, that the mobile device, will eventually authenticate the MME. But with the model checker, we found a counterexample. Like whenever the mobile device sends the initial connection request, attached request message to the MME, the uh, attacker uh, can, uh, using a malicious key node B, can send authentication reject message, which causes the victim EUE to move to the emergency calls only state. Like, it never allows the victim mobile device to reach to the authentication stage. So we then take these attack steps uh, into the cryptographic protocol verifier, where we pose these following queries, the injective correspondence queries. Every authentication reject message received by the UE must be sent by the core network. So we used ProVerif for the cryptographic protocol verifier, which is also capable of verifying secrecy, authenticity, and observational equivalence. Observational equivalents are used for linkability or traceability attack, which is used for coarse gain location tracking. So here is the test based setup. We have uh, used uh, software defined radio peripherals and the open source software stack, OpenLT, SRSLT, for building the malicious E node B and malicious EV. We have used different models of smartphones. We are not disclosing because we are in the process of responsible disclosure with them. Uh, we have used SIM cards from the all major uh, US carriers. And for some of the attack validation, we were not allowed to send any message to the core network. For those attacks, we have built our own custom built network. So now I'm going to talk about our findings and attack validation. Our LT inspector uh, uncovered 10 new attacks. Uh, the impacts of the attacks are ranging from denial of service, course gain location tracking, location spoofing, uh, NRG depletion, and panic attack. Our LT inspector also identified nine prior attacks, including IMZ catching, denial of service, linkability, man in the middle in 3G and 2G, and so on. So here is a, uh, one of the attacks uh, from the attached procedure. Uh, assume that the victim and the core network, they are, their sequence number are synchronized, uh, for which their value is now X. And assumption is that uh, the adversary knows the IMZ of the victim UE, and it is capable of setting up a malicious EV. So knowing the IMZ, the malicious EV can impersonate the victim and sends the attached request message. Receiving the attached request message, the core network increments the sequence number. So by, doing, by uh, sending lots of attached request message, the, core net, the sequence number between the victim EV and the core number gets desynchronized. So we call it authentication synchronization failure attack. Next attack uh, is for, from the paging procedure. Here, uh, the adversary sets up a malicious base station which advertises broadcast high signal power messages. And first, it hijacks the paging channel. By hijacking the paging channel, it can inject fake paging message because paging message doesn't include any authentication. So while sending this paging message, it turns on the emergency bit on. That means that UE will receive a uh, warning message in the system information block type 10 message, which shows the warning, like the ballistic missile alert. So, Malicious E node B broadcast this paging message to all the uh, cell uh, UEs in that cell area. So next technique we call, we call the attack chaining, where we combine multiple attack steps. We call it also authentication relay or mafia attack. In this attack, let us assume that uh, the victim is in Indiana uh, and it is connected to a core network. And uh, malicious, an adversary sets up a malicious E node B in the Indiana 
and another uh, malicious EV, malicious mobile device in California. So when the malicious EV would be broadcast higher signal power, it causes the victim EV to get disconnected and uh, forces the victim EV to send attached request message. So this attached request message is then relayed to the uh, malicious EV, which then uh, sends an attached request message to the original network. So victim, malicious EV gets the a challenge, authentication request, which is a challenge, but the malicious EV doesn't have the cryptographic master key, so how it can solve? So it relays that message to the victim EV and gets the challenge solved by the victim. So this is the way the malicious EV gets connected from California, impersonating, impersonating the victim EV, which is located in India, Indiana. So here's uh, the responsible disclosure. Uh, we have contacted the mobile network operators. One of the issues that one of the operators didn't use any kind of encryption for the control plane protocol message. That issue was resolved uh, with them, and other issues are still in progress. So uh, as of now, we have discussed, uh, we have analyzed the NAS UV to MME protocol layer interactions. We would like to, uh, we'd like to uh, analyze the RRC layer protocol interactions. Uh, then we'd like to incorporate the message data, and finally we propose the solutions. So in summary, we have proposed a systematic approach for analyzing the specification. We have uncovered 10 new attacks and nine prior attacks. We validated most of the attacks uh, in a test bit, and finally uh, we actually uh, open source our proofs, uh, properties, and the models. And we are continuously updating that. Any, any feedback will be appreciated. With that, I conclude my presentation, and I'm, I'm happy to take any questions. Hi, uh, Patrick Trainer, University of Florida. Really cool work. I'm curious if you went beyond talking to operators and went to, say, standards bodies to try and make sure that your, uh, your findings were internationally uh, recognized and fixed. So we have talked to our uh, professor, Professor Spaff. Uh, like he said that if we uh, let, them, let the operator know, they will eventually contact the 3GPP community. So yeah, that is the. I'd, I'd be more than happy to connect you with, with the people who can do Thank that you. for you. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So what fraction of these attacks uh, specification from specification errors and what fraction of these uh, operators uh, misconfigurations? So um, out of 10 attacks, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, eight of them are from specification, two of them uh, from the uh, operational network slip-ups, like the traceability attack that we found the network operators, all four network operators didn't use any kind of nonce so we can replay and uh, do a linkability attack. And one of the attacks actually that was from uh, a enhancement proposed by uh, other researchers in CCS15. That, is, that was the attack from the like, enhanced in, uh, authentication and key agreement protocol. So eight of them, uh, if I remember correctly, are from standard. And you got feedback from one, only one operator, right? So as you have, uh, discussed from SPAF, Professor SPAF, that if we contact one operator, then they have the separate channels like uh, to share that knowledge. So we have just contacted like uh, one operator. Actually, they will not. 